collection of songs and just beautiful musical performance. And uh, so we're going to do a little table talk tonight. Uh, my guest is Donovan Charles, who is a deacon here at Praise Tabernacle, worship leader here at Praise Tabernacle, most notoriously known as the brother of Lorraine Kennedy, <laughs> and the brother-in-law of Josh Kennedy. And um, the topic tonight is based upon the Revelation chapter two and three, the seven letters to the seven churches that we talked about on Sunday. And how each of those churches, as Jesus wrote to them, he talked to them about overcoming. Uh, they each were doing well in certain areas and in other areas they were facing challenges, different, unique for each church. And uh, Jesus was encouraging them and exhorting them to try to overcome the challenges they were facing. And he promised each one these distinct rewards, uh, some of which were, you know, obvious and some which more mysterious, what those would be, hidden manna or a stone with a name written on it and that type of thing. But the concept being that each of our lives, there are challenges we face and if we take on those challenges by God's grace and are willing to say, God, help me, I want to overcome this, that when we do, there are rewards that come with that. And so Donovan was gracious enough to come on here tonight, and we're going to talk about that. And in the practical level, these are practical things. They, it's not just um, super spiritual things. It's practical things when we overcome challenges. So for folks to just to get to know you a little bit better some things i know about you having uh talked to you over time and uh knowing your family but i think one of the things just early on in your life um you and your brothers and sisters grew up in uh, saint lucia and um what, are, what were some of the challenges you faced there as a young person those early years growing up in saint lucia well some of the challenges I um, would say I had to have gone through was, I think, in the area of not knowing who I was, not confident, um, you know, always being fearful, mm -hmm. um, you know, sometimes to a point where I felt, you know, stuck and uh, even paralyzed by, by fear, how it controlled me. Mm -hmm. And... Um, you know, even just being here tonight. <laughs> Some of that fear <laughs> creeps back in, it's, huh? It's there, you know. Um, yeah, but um, even, 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 in, even in that, you know, speaking, mm -hmm. it's not something that I, I relish, you know, doing. When you were a young person and that was a, a struggle for you, at what age did you come to know Christ? Well, I mean, I've been in church all of my life. Um, I accepted Christ as my Lord and Savior at the age of 15 years old. Okay. But even, you know, before that, you know, I mean, you know, fear just is, has always been something that have just, you know, controlled me, you know, yeah. even, you know, things that I am not comfortable doing, mm -hmm. um, I'm fearful of it. And even things that I know that I'm proficient in, you know, even in the area of music and, and worship, uh, I've done it a lot, but you know, this sometimes it, it's still, you know, something that is always there. So the concept of overcoming is um, pressing in past fear. In fact, uh, somebody once said that courage isn't the absence of fear. It's choosing to go forward in spite of the fear. So um, one of the things, uh, you know, I was jokingly referring to with you as we talked about tonight, is that as you got older, I guess uh, in, in your early adulthood in St. Lucia, you got involved uh, in a career path of a uh, firefighter, and yet I come to find out that like me, so I have this same fear, believe me, I understand it. You don't like heights, you don't like being up high, so as a firefighter, of course, you're challenged to climb ladders and do different things. So how did you work that out, you know, choosing to, to enter into that calling in that profession and yet knowing that when it came to going up high that wasn't exactly your favorite thing well my uh my dad was a firefighter you know okay. for 40 years and most times i guess 
in my case, a boy, I admired my father, his bravery, um, and I wanted to be like him. So I just entered the fire department, um, never thinking of um, that I have to climb the ladders, which I know I had to do, <laughs> but it wasn't a thought when that you was, had to do it for the first time. It, no, it, it was real. You know, right? I mean, we we had this 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 equipment called a Bronto Skylift, which extended as far as like seven stories high. Wow! And uh, in training school, we had had to um, put our uh, training school buddy on our backs and climb down and uh there was nothing to uh there was no safety net yeah. if you fall you know that was it but um but for me the the reward of overcoming that was um i could remember my first experience because in the fire department there is um aerodrome firefighting there's also um domestic firefighting and as well as um having to deal in the area of um, um accidents and emergencies like uh, the ambulance. So my first assignment was to be uh, um, an ambulance attendant. And uh, a young lady they called in and a young lady um, was um, delivering had baby baby. Yeah. They had never trained us for that, you know, <laughs> <laughs> just basic first aid um, training. And um, I did my best and the baby was delivered. And the satisfying and rewarding thing was just, she didn't see anything, but looking into her eyes, yeah. I could see that she was um, pleased that we came to um, her rescue in her moment of need and, yeah. um, and that she was safe and her baby was safe. Um, so I, I found reward in just, um, just providing service to um, the people that, that needed it. And, um, and yeah, so. I think that's a great example because you, we don't always do things for the reward, but the rewards come when we're willing to press in. And at the time that you entered into that calling, maybe as you say, you were just a young man doing what a lot of young men do, saying, well, if this is what my dad did, then I'll follow in his footsteps, as it were. If somebody told you the day you signed up, oh, and by the way, somewhere along the line, you're going to deliver a baby, help deliver a baby, you have said, I don't, I don't think I can do that. Um, and, and even having to climb that ladder with a fellow firefighter on your back, you're in that training not thinking the result of this calling, the reward of this calling, or one of the rewards is going to be, I'm going to help uh, a life come into this world. And I think that's a good thing to realize is that, you know, we don't know at any given time, we know what challenge we're facing. We don't know what the reward will be. We may have an idea, well, if I can just do this, then I'll get, you know, it'll feel good or I'll feel rewarded. But we don't always know some of the hidden rewards. Maybe that gets back to that thing that Jesus promised one of the churches. He says, you, you, if you're an overcomer, I'll give you the hidden manna, the stuff that you don't even know is there. But if you just are willing to press in, you'd be surprised uh, what kind of things might be uh, revealed to you. What what kind of other challenges do you feel that you faced in in um, you know over the course of, of your life? Uh, you've got a family. You know that's a challenge. Nobody necessarily knows what they're getting into. Starting a family. You've got some great kids, but what, has that been a challenge to you being being a dad? I guess it has in some regard. Um, you know, you know, for, especially when you. You expect, you know, certain things of your kids, mm -hmm. and uh, sometimes it doesn't always go the way that mm -hmm. uh, you intended it. You know, um, you know, for me, I was always an obedient child. Yeah. You know, um, whatever my parents said to do, I did it without questions. You know, um, I just followed through, and I knew what they expected, you know, of me, and I knew their their reputation. You know, and I wanted to make sure that you know that was kept in check. You know. So I always did what they said, and um, and uh, so I consider myself a good kid. Yeah. But um, you know, you have children who have minds of their own, and sometimes they even know more than you. You know, mm -hmm. in their minds, <laughs> yeah. and um, and they do they do things you know their way, and 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 sometimes you know it becomes you know f uh, moments of you know frustration, you know that you can't control them to have them do you know as you would want them to do it because you know i mean you love your children yeah. and you want the best for them um but um 
but sometimes it's a, it's a challenge sometimes but other than that you know my kids um i love them they're good kids yeah, you know great but, kids yeah. but yeah um so some that's some of the challenges is just not being able to have them see um you know that all my intention is is you know for them to be stead in the right way um but i'm sure in time you know everybody uh comes back you know you know it's interesting because uh, I read a great teaching one time on the uh, scripture is very familiar. Most parents uh, know about it from Proverbs. It says, train up a child in the way he should go. And when he's old, he will not depart from it. And I think it was Chuck Swindoll who was teaching on it. And he said, you know, if we go back to the, the actual meaning of the Hebrew words that are translated in English as the way he should go, it, it really more in the uh, language means the way he is inclined to go. And so the, the teaching was kind of like this, instead of us deciding for our kids, I know what you should do and where you should go, that we really have to take the time to get to know them as individuals because, you know, each of your kids is different. And so you can't, it's not one size fits all when it comes to raising kids. You have to get to know your kids. And that's the challenge. If God told us, raise up a child in a way he's inclined to go, and I don't mean inclined in the sense of, do bad but each child has a specific gifting or calling that god has put on them and we have to as parents take the time to say how did how did god wire this child and you know how can i best enhance that and um bring out that and i'll give you this simple example you know i in my career in education i was uh, a coach so I coached basketball and I coached soccer in particular. So I thought to myself, oh, my girls will be great basketball players and great soccer players. And, you know, they were real little. They did the little youth soccer and so forth. But my girls ended up deciding that God had built them to be dancers, not soccer players, not basketball players, dancers. And so I really had to just kind of adjust my whole paradigm of spending time with them. It wasn't going to be down on the soccer field. It wasn't going to be in the basketball court, although we shot baskets out in the backyard and so forth. It was going to be in the dance studio where I had to learn words that I didn't even know existed, like foite turns and stuff like that. I had to become, you know, knowledgeable enough to, to enter into their world. And that's a challenge. But parenting is probably a great example of uh, the rewards that come with pressing into a challenge because the rewards of seeing our kids become who God created them to be. And I don't think there's much that can measure up to that. And, you know, trying to envision when you go into raising kids, you have no idea, really. It's, boy, that's a, it's a mystery unfolding in front of you. But to just take on that challenge and to say, look, I'm going to make my mistakes along the way, because we all do as parents, and just say, but I'm going to try to help this child, each of however many kids you have, um, develop into the fullness of who God created them to be. And I think that's an awesome thing. And you were talking about music too. I mean, you're a very talented musician. You play guitar and keyboards, which is not that common. Uh, you have people like Barry who are great keyboard players and you have other people that are you know, great guitarists. You've got skill in both. Tell, talk about your challenges musically, becoming the person you are today as a worship leader. You know. I, I never liked the spotlight, you know, mm -hmm. um, and for some reason, you know, God has, you know, thrust me, you know, into that position of, of, of <laughs> you got several leader, spotlights on you know? right now, buddy. <laughs> um, but I remember, you know, uh, some of my friends, you know, I grew up on the islands and, uh, you know, we in high school, I was in an acapella group. Um, I, 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 I led a choir, you know, I, I, I did backups. I don't know if you're familiar with a guy called Ron Canoli. Yeah, sure. Um, he had a concert and they were auditioning um, for uh, backup singers. Yeah. And three of my friends, you know, told me, let's go, let's, let's try it out. And then we went and then they invited us to, to sing. Wow. But I always did it, you know, those things, you know, in, um, in a group setting where the focus and the attention is not on me. Right. So, you know, in doing so, I've just gone through life like that, just worship music you know always in the background mm -hmm. so it's not some 
So then um, coming to the United States, it's a different culture. Yeah. Um, the music is different. The interpretation of music is different, you know, um, compared to the islands where it's calypso reggae, you know, mm -hmm. and even a worship session could be all calypso, all reggae, you know. Yeah. I don't know how that translates to um, the United States. I'm sure it, you know, people embrace it. But I was always conscious that, you know, um, you know, my can can I measure up, you know, um, would it be accepted, you know, how I play? And so I kind of just relegated myself, you know, when I came to the, to, to the, the balcony and not mm. come, you know. Balcony is a good place. Yeah, guys, just let you, know. you get to see everything. But um, <laughs> yeah, I relegated myself there with my family for many years. And then I would say, you know, I'll just do stuff that I think that is essential to the body. Like, as you know, I clean. Yes. You know, and, so, and let me just say that because that's that's an interesting thing. Because you, you're not a guy who, who does seek the spotlight, but I want to spotlight that. You know, on any given day during the week, you can come in and find Donovan uh, emptying trash cans and vacuuming and straightening up just as an act of service here, part of his role as a deacon. But it's just, it's a beautiful thing that, that doesn't get much recognition. And, uh, and I want to commend you for that. Thank but you. Back, back to your music. Go ahead. But <laughs> I'm coming to the point, though. Yes, but, yes, I know. understand. Um, so I would just, you know, relegate myself to just cleaning. Yeah. And I figured, you know, that's essential to, you know, the advancement of the Amen. body. I mean, the church needs cleaning, you know, so I'll just do that. Um, but I did that because I didn't want to, not I didn't want to worship because I wanted to worship. Mm -hmm. It's just that I was fe fearful that um, I wouldn't be, um, it wouldn't be something that my talents or my interpretation of music wouldn't be embraced. Mm -hmm. And so my friends would tell me, but why aren't you doing that, you know? I said, no, nah, I, I, I can function in other areas until one time I came in, in the parking lot, there was no vehicles. Mm -hmm. So I figured there was nobody there. Yeah. So I came in, I cleaned, and then I said, I'm just going to do what I usually do at home, and I'm just going to worship. So I went on the keyboard, mm -hmm. not knowing that you were there. <laughs> and then you opened that door, and then, you know, I don't know if you remembered, but you said, um, you, you sound like you understand um, the keyboard. And I was more embarrassed more than anything to, you know, that you you found me there. But then in that, you gave me the invitation to to, to do a special. Mm -hmm. And then from that, another special where I added my friend um, Dion Brathwaite. Yeah, yes. I don't think he ever played. And then from that, another special, you know, having me starting to get comfortable now with, and then we added Michelle and Michelle got Debbie. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, and then until you give us the invitation to do, to lead worship. Yes. And, um, you know, I find, you know, most reward in that, you know, that, that God would see me, uh, uh, island boy, mm. um, to come and help, you know, facilitate, you know, helping ushering people into the presence, you know, of God, that is one of the most rewarding thing, you know, for me and, and even doing worship, it's, it's, it's not something that I take, you know, lightly. I you know there's a lot of preparation, you know, involved in it and a lot of detail, you know, for me, because I want to give God, you know, my best, my, this is my act of service, my offering to him. Absolutely. And, um, and in that, you know, I, I recognize too, that, you know, even, you know, in uh, the, the, the process of, of worship, you know, there are people who, um, I mean, this church is diverse and not just in terms of ethnicity, but there are people who, you know, are coming, you know, um, you know, from different experiences, you know, I mean, broken homes, you know, um, you know, uh, oppression, uh, depression, you know, mm -hmm. frustration. And I, I recognize that, you know, worship is a time, you know, where that is just that one time where people have, you know, that experience that, they don't have they don't think of their circumstance or what they have gone through Amen. throughout the week but it's a time now of refreshing and releasing you know and um and and and, and my my role you know it's it's really not to have the spotlight or the um the recognition you know um you know but my role even as you at least that's my interpretation even you as the pastor who studies to show you um, the, the word of god you know did the, the your purpose, I, I perceive it, it's not to be a minister, you know, but, yes, I like but, that word. <laughs> but, but to, um, you know, help, you know, people, you know, 
reach a point where in your word they could understand the the, the, the the character of Christ, the true nature of Christ. And I think even me as a worship um, leader, you know, my purpose is not to have the spotlight on me, but, you know, to to in the choosing of, of the songs, so whatever songs that I choose, mm -hmm. that it, it reflects the true nature and the true character of Christ. And that being, you know, God is love and God is faithful and God is merciful and, and that stuff and even in that that experience you know they could have you know a breakthrough you know healing can take place you know refreshing can take place you know um mysteries can be revealed you know through mm -hmm. so for me um you know that is um that is my take you know on on, on worship and, and 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 that is one of the things i find you know just most rewarding even when i sit up there you know and um worshiping it's never um, you know, I'm not looking at to see any type of reaction because at the end of the day, you know, my purpose here is really um, to to worship to uh, an audience of one, Amen. you know, and um, but then it's always refreshing to see, you know, that people are actually um, entering into that holy place, that secret place, and in there, you know, God is, you know, working in their heart, in their mind, and. Um, and lives have been transformed so yeah well yeah. that's an awesome uh, kind of summation of what worship is intended to be and how it works when it's done from the right spirit and the interesting thing is the way that this all came about as you've described it is actually a good example of the kind of reward that jesus said we would get if we walk in humility so he says, when you come into an event, he says, don't sit up front and draw attention to yourself. He says, just sit in the back. And maybe somebody will come along and say, no, come up front and bring you up front. So you come into this church and you don't come in like gangbusters and say, um, hey, just so you all know, I sang with Ron Canoli back in the islands. So I'm, I'm a pretty big to do here, you know, and uh, y'all probably need to recognize me and acknowledge me for my giftings, because you certainly do. You have a great voice, a tremendous ear for harmony, and as I say, playing both instruments very proficiently. But instead, you come in and get the vacuum cleaner and, and just set about serving, and quite by accident, maybe I think my wife dropped me off that day or whatever, you didn't see a car in the parking lot, you don't know anybody else in the building, and I get to hear just pure, uh, unvarnished, heartfelt worship just pouring out. And I'm thinking to myself, who is this out here? So I open the door and there you are. And from that point, once again, as Jesus said, the reward is that you're not pushing yourself forward. I'm asking you, hey, we need that gift here at this church. And we want to give opportunity and provide a way for that to uh, happen. And so those rewards those best rewards, I guess I would say, in my mind, the ones Jesus tells us that are going to come are a result of us not seeking the reward, but seeking to serve, to take a place of humility and let him decide that he's going to reward us for that. You know, the Bible says that God resists the proud and he gives grace to the humble. And in another scripture, it says, humble yourself in the sight of the Lord, and he will lift you up in due time. So I don't know how many months went by that you were cleaning and emptying trash and this and that. I don't know how many months, but in due time, God said, oh, I, I appreciate your heart, but I've given you additional gifts besides your cleaning gift, because you're good at that too. But he wanted to recognize all of the giftings that he's put in you and, and uh, the musical giftings as well. Now, it's interesting because we were talking about kids, and, and, and last week, for those who were here or those who were watching online, we had a great group of young people uh, up here sharing in the table talk, uh, along with Joel and Arlise, one of which was your son, Ethan. And I really was impressed with what the young people shared. And it made me think regarding the topic tonight, of um, overcoming and the rewards of overcoming. When you look at the letters that Jesus was dictating to John to deliver to the churches, obviously some of the things that they were being challenged to overcome were coming from the outside. Persecution coming from the outside. Uh, there's several places where 
um, Paul or uh, John refers to uh, the synagogue of Satan that, that uh, they're dealing with. And in one place, Jesus says, I know where you dwell, where Satan dwells. In other words, these people were in tough situations, but it's, that's external stuff. But balancing that out, some of the challenges that Jesus is uh, issuing to these churches are internal things. Like he says, come back to your first love. You've lost your first love. Or I don't see you being hot or cold. You need to make up your mind how you feel about me. Those, those aren't coming from the outside. Those are coming from the inside. And as the young people were sharing last week, they were talking about external challenges, which I think we expected um, young people today growing up in a challenging world and how are they dealing with the temptations and how are they dealing with uh, how the world uh, views Christians, young people, and so forth. And I thought they did a great job answering that. But they also addressed the internal, that some of the challenges they face are coming from inside them, challenges of just um, being complacent, you know, not really um, pushing themselves to, to go beyond what's comfortable. And I was impressed by that. And so I'm going to ask you, you know, do, do you feel that those are things, and obviously these young people are saying they face that, do you think those are things that we as, as adult believers also have to be cautious about? Well, yeah, of course. Um, you know, I, I have some, you know, complacency that, you know, um, in certain areas that uh, definitely needs um, attention and growth you know uh you know even for me um you know having the the bible be something that's just optional you know mm -hmm. um you know where i don't yes i i read the bible and i i do study but then you know what time you know the bible says study to show thyself approve unto god a workman needeth not to be ashamed right and rightly divided in the word of truth but sometimes i find you know, I get so, you know, absorbed with um, my life. I'm a father. I'm a husband. Yeah. I'm, you know, self-employed. You know, yeah. I, I wear many hats. And the, the time, you know, that I give God, you know, in his presence and studying his word, I, I sometimes rely on just a nugget of uh, truth that I get from maybe Facebook mm -hmm. or, uh, yeah. or any um, of those, you know, you know platforms. And um, that is an area that I, I, I definitely, you know, struggle in and, and um, you know, I need definitely to give that attention. So that's one of the in the things. The other. Um um, when I say that I'm going to do something, mm -hmm. um, I have to, I, I, it has to be done. It's a reflection, you know, you know, of, of my character, you know, and uh, I don't want and to. it's a reflection of God's character. And a, a reflection you are of God's, representative exactly. to exactly. people exactly. who know you as a believer. Yeah, that's yeah. right. That's right. So, I mean, those are areas that I am working on. I mean, I'm still, you know, I've done a lot better, you know, in keeping my word. And if I can do um, something, because uh, there's many um, seniors here that I do help, you yes. know, and um, I don't want uh, to to be um, uh, the type of individual that says to them that I am, and then I am not, you know. I mean, that's again, it's it's a bad representation of me, you know, as a, as a believer. So, so those are areas that um, I inwardly I suspect that um, can definitely improve. So, you know, it's interesting because we're talking about rewards. The rewards of spending time in the Word flow over into every other area of life. That's what we've got to remind ourselves sometimes. You know, if I say, well, I've, I can't spend too much time just reading my Bible or praying because I've got other things to do. And yet, if I do spend time in the Word and do spend time in prayer, it actually makes those other things go so much better. Uh, and, uh, you know, there are many great uh, teachers and, and church fathers over the years, so I'm not going to remember which one it was, but I, I remember reading about one of these fellas, um, Charles Spurgeon or one of these guys, and he made it a habit, John Wesley possibly, he was big on prayer, um, made it a habit of praying an hour each day. And um, he had a, a person, an assistant that helped him set up his schedule 
for the things he had to do, speaking engagements, appointments, and so forth. And knowing that he had blocked out an hour to pray, um, his assistant said, listen, this is going to be a really, really busy day. This is a full schedule. This is uh, probably the one of the toughest agendas we've ever had to try to complete in one day. I'm not sure an hour of prayer is going to work. And this individual will say, it's John Wesley said, I think you're right. I'll probably need two hours of prayer. <laughs> And that really stuck with me, you know, that we do ourselves a disservice if we allow those other things that are out there that are competing for our time to diminish our time spent with the Lord, because none of them are going to go all that well if we haven't, uh, at the core of our day, spent the time with Him to orient ourselves properly and to to really depend on Him to get us through those things, because I think one of the things that I believe that um, when Jesus was challenging each of these seven churches that he's dictating the letters to, um, he's not telling them to do things that he's not going to empower them to do. I, I don't believe that is um, the nature of God to, to have expectations of us that are unrealistic that we can't fulfill. Uh, more so, he, the, you've heard this expression, maybe God doesn't call the equipped, he equips the called. So he says, are you willing to do this? And if we, as many people uh, over the years have, um, like Moses, and God calls Moses and says, I'm calling you to go to speak to Pharaoh, and Moses says, I can't do that. I'm not your guy. I can't even speak. And God says, look, I'm not sending you there without the ability to speak. In fact, I'll send Aaron with you. He can speak for you if need be. I'm just asking you, are you willing? And I think that's part of it. And um, for us to be able to recognize whatever challenge we're facing at any given time, if we're willing to say to God, man, I do not want to do this. I don't think I'm capable of doing this. Um, but if you if you go with me i'll do it and we even see that with moses too <laughs> at one point as moses is uh, you know leading the people of israel uh, god is pretty frustrated with them and he says to moses uh, essentially look you keep going i i, I can't hack these people <laughs> anymore they're disobedient they're stiff-necked they're this and that and moses says i'm not going on unless you go with us i can't do this without you you know, and what, yeah, just give me your reflections on that, Donovan. What, what's been your experience in terms of uh, when you've taken on a challenge? And as you say, there are many ongoing challenges in our lives. But when you've taken on a challenge, in what way has God made himself real to you or present to you to show you you're not in this alone? Well, you know, again, in the area of, 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 of fear, you know, I mean, when I, uh, I surrendered, you know, it to, to him mm -hmm. and recognized that, you know, I, I cannot deal with this, you know, um, you know, you know, he brought me, you know, I mean, give me clarity, you know, in the scriptures, you know, saying, you know, that, you know, no good thing will he withhold to them who walk of right, you know, I mean, his divine power has given us everything that we need. So that means I'm equipped, you know, I am capable, you know, um, everything that I need that pertains to life and godliness onto the knowledge of him who's called us by his own glory. So, um, you know, when I, you know, recognize, uh, you know, those things and that, you know, I don't have to carry the fight you know, um, it has already been won, you know, it's been nailed to the cross. So whether it be sin, whether it be struggles, disappointment, inadequacies, you know, what I feel that I'm not capable, you know, he has already won that and I have the victory and my faith in him, you know, um, definitely, you know, has uh, allowed me to be victorious and, and I have reaped, you know, the many rewards from, um, from trusting him, you know, that he, uh, He's able to do what he said he'll do for me. So, Amen. And I think it's beautiful that in just that 
short sharing there, you quoted so many different scriptures because that really becomes the key. We have to know what God's word says. That gets back to why we need to spend time in the word, right? We have to know what God's word says, and then we have to make a choice. Do we trust him? Do we believe that if he said that, then that must be true? And I think that really becomes the pivotal moment in facing challenges is the moment where I decide, am I going to believe God or not? Am I going to take him at his word? And if I do, I will find over and over and over again that he is faithful to his word. The um, Bible says even when we're faithless, he's still faithful. <laughs> he doesn't have any choice. He is faithful. His very nature is faithful. He cannot deny himself. And so we reach a point at which it's a decision moment. And I think that's really what it comes down to. The concept of overcoming isn't the end point. It's not the end point where the overcoming occurs. It's at the beginning of the choice that we make that leads to us overcoming to say, I don't know that I have the capacity, the resources, the ability to make this happen, but I believe God, you said, this about me, that um, Lauren Daigle song, you say, right? You know, you say I am strong, you know, so to, which I think that's song kind of encapsulates a lot of what we're talking about here. When, when we have to decide, am I basing my decision on my fear, my perceived inadequacies, weaknesses, and so forth, or am I basing my decision on the promises the sure and certain promises that God has made, and I'm either trusting him in those promises or I'm doubting him in those promises. And um, certainly the Bible is filled with stories of people like us who have faced those times and either succumbed to doubt or walked in faith. And so we're no different than any of them. We have our, all of us, I think, have our moments where we're a little shaky in terms of the overcoming and other times when we're willing to believe God and choose to step forward in faith and, and face that challenge. And, and the great thing is the reward, the rewards that are there, you know. Um, I you know the Bible says Paul talks about there are laid up for me crowns of righteousness. Do you envision you'll have a few of those somewhere along the line, Donna? I trust so. <laughs> <laughs> I trust so. That's right, and I, I believe so for both of us. Uh, I don't think Paul was speaking of something that was for him alone. I think that those who uh, overcome are rewarded, and that's why on Sunday I was saying, I know there are times I miss out on what God would have wanted me to have if I'd only believed him more, trusted him more, I'd be more willing to, to press into what he's calling me to do. And I try to make it a goal of mine to miss out on as few rewards as possible, not because of what they bring back to me, but ultimately, and you might know this from a song, what am I gonna do with all those crowns, all those rewards, do you know? I'm going to cast them down at his feet. See, so when I, when I have all those rewards <laughs> and I'm standing in the presence of my Savior, I don't want them anymore anyway. I mean, I'm glad that he gave them to me. I'm going to give them right back to him because he's so worthy. And guess what? I wouldn't have gotten one single one of those rewards if it were not for his grace and his strength, you know, in my life. So. Well, I thank you tonight, my friend, for coming on. It's been a pleasure talking with you. And I, I want to pray tonight as we close for uh, many rewards coming towards you. And, uh, and I want to thank you for, you know, extending the invitation. Um, of course, this is not a platform that uh, um, I'm used to. Uh, I, I, when you said to me, you gave me the invitation, I almost said no to you. <laughs> I could sense that. You know, but I, I trusted God that, you know, he would not bring me here to stumble over my words and uh, he would not bring me here for me to be an embarrassment, you know, Amen. to myself. So I trusted him and uh, definitely the fact that I'm here doing this is 
clear evidence that I have um, I have overcome. Yes. Um, you know my fears. It's 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 probably made me there, but then I don't think it's what that controls my life. So Amen. thanks for the invitation, Pastor Steve. You're welcome, my friend. Heavenly Father, I just thank you tonight uh, for Donovan. I thank you that uh, you brought him here, uh, made him uh, a servant here at this church and serving as a deacon, serving as a worship leader, serving as an example to others just by his truthfulness and his honesty tonight about struggles that he's faced, as we all do. And Lord, even the choice to sit here tonight around the table talk was a challenge, and yet he decided to press in and overcome whatever apprehension he might have about being here in the spotlight tonight. And I ask you, Lord, that you would be true to your promise to reward him in various ways for, for tonight and for all the things he does here at this church. Reward him with blessings for himself, for his family, for his ministry, Lord, in his employment. Lord, bless him in every possible way. And, and Lord, lay up those crowns of righteousness for him because he's not done yet. Uh, earning them. He's got more, I know, coming his way in the days ahead. And I, I ask you that each one of us, knowing that those letters to the seven churches weren't for a group of people that excludes us, but they were for a group of people that includes us to take on the challenges, to press past the fear, to overcome the lethargy the laziness that can easily settle in on us and say, no, God, you're worthy of more than that. I will give you my all. I will spend time in your word. I will spend time in prayer because the rewards are so great. I don't want to miss a single one. I thank you for those who are here tonight, those who are watching online. May the blessings fall upon them, the rewards for overcoming and obedience. And we thank you for this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, folks, for being here. Thank you for watching online. And uh, we'll hope to see you here Sunday as Pastor Joshua will be back taking us through Revelation chapter 1 in our Intimacy series. God bless you. Thanks for joining us. If you enjoyed the service and you want to learn more about the ministry, Visit our website at praisetabernacle.com where you can learn about the church leadership, find devotional content, weekly newsletters from the pastors, and much more. You can also like, follow, and subscribe to us on Facebook, Instagram, our YouTube channel, and many other social media platforms. We hope to see you soon here at Praise Tabernacle. We are people restored and inspired serving everywhere.